Hello, I'm Father John Sims Baker, and I'm the Catholic Chaplain at Vanderbilt University in Nashville, Tennessee. And I'm really excited today to be um, opening up with you all the UCAT. And you first thing you might be saying is, what is the UCAT? Well, officially, the UCAT is, I'm holding a copy of it right here, is the Youth Catechism of the Catholic Church. And you can tell then where that name comes from. You get first part of youth, first part of catechism, and you get UCAT. But, you know, I think for anybody of your generation, certainly when you hear a word like UCAT, you think of something like YouTube or something like that. And, and I think that association, whether it was intended or not, is, is a good one as well. Um, because this really needs to be the, the catechism of the, of the Catholic Church that the UCAT is, is based on, of course, is the compendium of our, of our faith. And this faith needs to become your faith. Uh, you need to be able to live your faith, and you need to be able to know your faith. As a matter of fact, um, the church really expects that of you. Um, and there's an introduction, a foreword to the UCAT from uh, Pope Benedict. And it's a very interesting uh, document, a writing from one of the popes, because Pope Benedict is very direct and very frank, and I don't know, probably most of you have not read a whole lot of papal documents, but they're very often not the most exciting reading every day, and, and maybe not most direct sort of uh, writings. And in and, and this one, Pope Benedict is very direct, and I'd like to share with you a few of the things that Pope Benedict actually is saying to you about, about this book, if we could take just a couple of moments to look at uh, at the foreword to, of, the, of, this, of this book. First of all, the Pope has some very nice things to say about you. Uh, he says, many people say to me, this is the Pope, the youth of today are not interested in this. Uh, I disagree, and I am certain that I am right. It's a pretty bold thing to say. The youth of today are not as superficial as some think. They want to know what life is really about. I think that's true. I think you probably want to know what life is really about. I want to know what life is really about. And this book is exciting because it speaks of our own destiny and so deeply engages every one of us. So now the Pope has given you a nice compliment and hopefully I think gotten your attention a little bit there saying this is really about what life is all about. Now actually he's going to speak very bluntly to you. This catechism was not written to please you. It will not make life easy for you because it demands of you a new life. It places before you the gospel message as the pearl of great value for which you must give everything. And then the Pope goes on to say what we've just said. You need to know what you believe. You need to be more deeply rooted in the faith than the generation of your parents. You need God's help if your faith is not going to dry up like a dewdrop in the sun, if you want to resist consumerism, if your love is not to drown in pornography, if you are not going to betray the weak and leave the vulnerable helpless. And so the, P the Pope is speaking very directly to you. I think he, rec he recognizes very clearly the kind of challenges that you already know that your faith comes under attack from you know, in the world that we live in today, that you live in. But finally, he utters um, a word of great hope and confidence in you and speaks with great humility himself. You all know how deeply the community has, of faith has been wounded recently through the attacks of the evil one, through the penetration of sin itself into the interior, yes, into the heart of the church. Do not make that an excuse to flee from the face of God. When Israel was at its lowest point in her history, God called for help, not from the great and honored ones of Israel, 
but from a young man by the name of Jeremiah. Jeremiah felt overwhelmed. Ah, oh, Lord God, behold, I do not know how to speak, for I am only a youth. But God was not to be deterred. Do not say, I am only a youth. For to all to whom I send you, you shall go. And whatever I command you, you shall speak. And so with these words, Pope Benedict introduces the UCAT. And I think you see how this youth catechism of the Catholic Church really does need to become your catechism, really does need to become a statement and a profession of your faith that you make uh, your own. It's one of the reasons I kind of like the, the fact of this, this, this title. It's kind of ambiguous in a way. I'm reminded of uh, what Father John Harden, uh, a great theologian who died just a few years ago, said that the um, uh, that the, one of the most important words of Catholic theology, and it's not a very complicated word, is the word and. <laughs> and, and so in, in, Catholic, in, in our Catholic faith, so often it's, it's not this or that, it's this and that. And so, the, the, so today, I think this catechism, is, as I've been opening it up, and I've really just only, it's only been out a short while, and I've only had it in my hands a very short while, and as I've been going through it, and as I've been able to have a few conversations with a few other people, some other priests, but also other uh, young people like yourselves, um, wh what do you like about it? We've all been like, wow, I really like this. I like this better uh, than I thought I would, because it gives us reasons for our faith. Uh, it gives us a, an understanding of our faith, but, but reasons and understanding of our faith that I think are, are really real. What I would call, using the words of the great uh, philosopher and, and mathematician Blaise Pascal, uh, uh, the, the reasons of the heart. You know, and I, I'll give you an example of this. You know, um, we all love our mothers, right? Everybody loves their mother. <laughs> And, and you could probably come up with a list of, you know, objective kind of bullet point kind of things of like, my mom, you know, she folded my laundry for me, or she made the best macaroni and cheese ever, or, you know, something like that. And you could come with this long list of things, and, and they'd be true, and, you know, I'm sure there are things that you know, are nice about your mom, whatever they are, but I don't think they're really the reason that you love your mother. And I think sometimes when we start you know, coming up with things to try to explain our faith or whatever. We say some things about God or about our faith that are, that are true enough, but, but maybe aren't really the reason. And like, for example, the real reason why we love our mothers, I think, is because, well, our mothers loved us first. They loved us before we even knew what love was, before we could ever love back. And of course, you know, that's the story of, uh, of salvation, that, that God has loved us really from the beginning. Uh, and, and, and ultimately, that's the, that is the story of, uh, of salvation, of this, this love of God uh, for us. And, and that's what I keep finding in the UCAT, are questions about our faith, uh, reasons for our faith, put out and explained, but, but these more sort of reasons of the heart that I find you know, sort of particularly, uh, particularly satisfying. And so I just encourage us, let's, let's go ahead and open it up. Let's look at it. Let's look and see how it begins. And it begins the way that all the catechism, the, for example, the catechism of the Catholic Church uh, begins. And, and that is looking at us a, a, as human beings. And, and, and it starts with a kind of an assumption or a, 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 of, of of a philosophical assumption about what it means to be a human being, what, what human life is all about, you know? And that's something that's really important because it's always there. That's why it's important to know at least a little something about philosophy because, because there is always a philosophy. To, if, if, if you ever meet somebody who says they don't really have any philosophy of life or something like that, I, I wouldn't believe them for a minute because, um, you know, they get up out of bed in the morning for some reason or another. They don't just, you know, they don't just lie there all day. And, and something has to get you up out of the bed or you just keep hitting the snooze alarm all day or something, you know, and, and, and nothing ever happens. And, and what the church offers right from the beginning is, um, is an understanding that, that, that we as human beings were made for happiness. Uh, we were made to be happy by knowing God uh, by being loved by God in this world and then forever in heaven. And, and that's, what, that's what, what 
what our life as human being is really about. That it has an end, it has a purpose, it has a direction. And that end and that purpose and direction is to, to know the love of God and to enjoy it in this life and for all eternity in heaven.